Good morning. This is, uh, we're here on YouTube, and it's good day to start with coffee and Jesus. All right. Um, we start these by getting, delivering some facts, first of all, uh, because I want people to, I want people to have facts, not fear, okay? This morning's report from the CDC, that's the Center for Disease Control, all right? Uh, the Center for Disease Control, and here's their report this morning. In West Virginia, there are actively uh, 190, what, uh, actually there's 189 active cases. There have been 191 cases in West Virginia. Two people have died as a result of complications with the coronavirus. Worldwide, there, were, there have been 956,588 cases. Right, that's an increase of almost 200,000 since last week. There have been 48,320 deaths. That's an increase of about 6,000 deaths since last week. There have been 202,728 recoveries. This is worldwide, and that's an increase of almost 100,000 since last week. Right. Now, uh, in our area, right, there are two cases right now in Cumberland, Maryland. There is one in Morgan County, West Virginia, and there are about 19 cases, 16 to 19 cases in Frederick County, which is where a lot of people from here go shopping, going into, um, going into Winchester. All right. Now, the, the two cases in Cumberland are the result of people traveling to states where there's a lot of people with coronavirus. Uh, and I don't get, I just don't get what people don't get, right? Stay home unless you absolutely have to travel. Don't, right? Don't put yourself in harm's way. Here's, here's one way to think about it. I'm not so concerned about getting it myself. I'm concerned that I might spread it to someone else who might not survive. And if we all start thinking like that, maybe we'll take this quarantine, whatever you want to call it, a little more seriously. You know, if we do the, if uh, we will always get what we always got if we always do what we always did. Right now, there's over uh, 216,000 cases in the United States. 110,000 of those cases are in New York and New Jersey. And people were still traveling there. Why? Can't be to go to the theater, they're closed. What were you doing? People going to Florida, spring break, and thousands of people got the coronavirus, and then they came home, back to their home areas, and spread it there. People, this will stop spreading if we take safety precautions. That's simple, right? Around, surrounding my area here, Pennsylvania has reported this morning 5,805 cases. Ohio, 2,547 cases. Maryland, 
1,988 cases. Virginia, 1,484 cases. Tennessee, 2,643 cases. Right? Um, now, I brought up Tennessee and I brought up Virginia because my grandchildren live there. And I would love to take this time to go and visit them. But in doing so, it, it would put me at risk and it may even put them at risk. Okay? So for them and for me, I don't do it. This is why they're talking about essential travel. Only do essential travel. All right? So people, let's use a, a, a lot of common sense here. Now churches are open. All right? A lot of them are meeting in the parking lots where the people stay in their cars and they listen to everything by way of their radio. A lot of them are doing just like I'm doing right here. And we're doing it by way of YouTube, by way of Facebook, and other ways of live streaming. And we'll get through this. Yes, some people do show up here in the building. They stay spaced apart. I, we do what we can to keep it under 10 in the building at any one time. We put communion out on the table so people can come in and grab communion right, and then go back to their cars and watch it by way of live stream or uh, go home and watch it by way of live stream. And if we do this and we keep practicing safe distancing, there's a chance within two weeks we can flatten the curve. But it ain't going to happen if we keep doing business as usual. Right? Yes, I'm getting a little stir crazy with this. But I think about this. I, I don't want to catch it and give it to somebody else. Because, A, I might not survive it. I'm, I'm a senior citizen. I'm 66 years old. I'm in good health. Okay. But I may give it to someone who's not. And they may die. And I don't want to do that. Right? So we are open in this sense. And we are practicing safe distancing. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Safe distancing. Now, I saw this the other day. And I like this idea too. You know, people are saying, you know, wash your hands. Going, you know, singing happy birthday twice or... West Virginia, we sing uh, Take Me Home, Country Roads. All right? how, about, how about this? How about taking the time and while you're washing your hands, pray. Common sense. Just real common sense. All right, so let's have some coffee. And let's open our Bibles this morning. We are in Nehemiah chapter 9. And he starts off, I like this cup, really keeps my coffee warm. And I like flavored creamer. I like, uh, this morning I'm trying chocolate car caramel. Mm, tastes very good. On the 24th day of the same month, the Israelites gathered together, fasting and wearing sackcloth, putting dust on their heads. This was a symbolic of mourning and weeping and repentance. It was served also as a reminder to them of what they had done and how and what is leading to repentance. Now, some were doing this, may, may be doing this for religious reasons. Oh, I'm walking around in sackcloth and I got dust on my head. Look at me, I'm in mourning. I'm, in, I'm grieving over my sin. I've been fasting. Oh, my belly hurts. And Jesus said, if that's the reason you did it, <laughs> don't. Right? They've been fasting and praying for days. The Israel, Israelites of descent separated themselves from all foreigners. So they, they, took, they moved away from all distractions. Foreigners were still coming in to Jerusalem at the time, 
that they were selling and buying and selling, and he said, they separated themselves. Uh, some of these uh, might have been foreigners who had converted to Judaism, but still, they separated themselves. And it, it's, not a, it's not a prejudice, it's not a racial thing. It was, it was a cleansing thing for them, mentally. And it's the same way we do when we take of the Lord's Supper. He said, talks about taking it in a worthy manner. He said, we, we separate ourselves from all the distractions that keep us from doing this rightly, from recognizing Jesus for who he is and for what he's done. They stood in their places, confessed their sins and the sins of their ancestors. Now, we, uh, uh, we as a nation, we do the same thing, right? We are a nation, like Israel, blessed by God. <clears throat> we could not be where we are today if God was not for us. But, like the Israelites, we have abandoned God. And by abandoning God, I'm, I'm saying this, I'm saying that we, we don't honor him the way we should. We don't put him first like we should as a nation. Yes, many individuals watch me and say, I do, I do, I do. Okay, but as a, as a nation, I think we, be, we have, and this is my humble opinion, we have become more religious than Christian. They, they stood and separated themselves, confessing their sins. They stood and read from the law for six hours, and then they stood praying and confessing their sins for six hours. So for 12 hours, for 12 hours, they gathered in the, in the area around the temple, praying and confessing and weeping and reading the law, and I'll tell you what, in America today, we have people that can't, that can't even do that for one hour on a Sunday. And this is why I'm saying that America has become more religious than Christian. So as a nation, as a people, we start confessing our sins. We start acknowledging God for who he is. Then these numbers... These numbers can change. These numbers that we that we've been just putting up, that can change because it can it will be with God's help. And they they prayed and they confessed their sins and he says and he says this stand up and praising the Lord praise the Lord your God who is from everlasting to everlasting. What do we have to praise him for? We have, to, we have his mercy to praise him for. He is a merciful God. But that won't be forever. The sun rose this morning. The air is quite a bit on the cool side, but it's a beautiful sunny day in Paw Paw, West Virginia this morning. Right? God is merciful. Even though we have, as a nation, have turned our backs on him, he hasn't turned his back on us. Now, I brought this up before, in one on Facebook, and I'm going to just say to him, because it bothers me. More in in from January to April 2nd of 2020, more babies have been aborted in the United States than people worldwide dying of coronavirus. More babies have been aborted in the United States 
than people dying of coronavirus worldwide. And yet, what is the thing we cry out about? The coronavirus. We want God to bless America, then we have to put him first. We have to seek him first. And this is what the Israelites are doing at this time. They're confessing this. They're confessing how God has brought them. Brought Abraham from the land of the Chaldeans. And established them as a nation. Descendants of Abraham. And how they turned their backs on him. And they, now they're off in captivity. And they cry out and God brings them back. They cried out in Egypt and God made him, uh, brought him out of Egypt. They cried out in the wilderness and God gave them manna. He gave them a cloud by night and a, uh, I'm sorry, a cloud by day and fire by night. And they was they made a golden idol. They went up to see the land and said, we can't do it because there are giants in the land. They forgot who was with them. Who brought them out of Egypt? And they looked at these giants and said, can't do it. And God was saying, I'll knock down the giants. You just go in. No. Remember? Twelve men went to spy on Canaan. Ten came back and said, no way. Two men said yes. And those two men, almost 40 years later, get to walk into the promised land while the ten did not. They wandered for 40 years while that generation died off. God is merciful. But he won't stay merciful. We need as a nation to return to him. We need to recognize in our history that if God was not for us as a nation, we would not have survived. We would not be where we are today if God was not for us. He is ever patient, but he's not going to remain that way forever. Verse 37 of this chapter says, because of, in their prayer of confession, because of our sins, its abundant harvest goes to kings you have placed over us. They rule over our bodies and our cattle as they please. We are in great distress. If we, as an individual, this is where I go about setting the example. If we, as an individual, take this seriously, and we come before God, confess our sins to Him, confess the sins of our nation, to him. He will hear from heaven. Second Chronicles 7 14. He will hear from heaven, forgive our sins, and heal our land. We want this coronavirus, we want the curve to flatten. It won't happen unless we pray. It won't happen unless we confess our sins before God and ask for his forgiveness both as an individual and as a nation and it, it will take the individual not a proclamation from Washington DC no not a proclamation from the preacher in front of a congregation 
No. It will happen when I as an individual and you as an individual pray before God and ask for his forgiveness of our nation. And each one do that. And we set the example. In verse 38, he says, In view of all this, we were making, we are making a binding agreement, putting it in writing, and our leaders, our Levites, and our priests are fixing their seal to it. We don't need, we don't need the President of the United States to affix his seal to this. We don't need the governors of our states to affix their seal to this. We must affix our own seal and make this commitment before God. We have sinned. We have put other things ahead of you. We have sacrificed our children to the God of convenience. We have put money, sports, entertainment ahead of you. Forgive us. And when we do that, when we do that sincerely, remember we can't fool God. God will remember with favor. And he makes a promise. He will hear from heaven, forgive our sin, and heal our land. So I'm calling on you to join me and say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to come before God. I'm going to confess my sins. I'm going to come before God and I'm going to confess the sins of my nation. And I'm going to ask God to forgive us. Forgive me and forgive us. And then I'm going to do everything in my life today to be a living sacrifice, putting you first. And before we go to God in prayer, I put my phone number up there. If you need me, call me. You need me to go to the store for you. Call me. If you're out of food because there's no money coming in, because you're out of a job, call me. Don't go to bed hungry. Don't let your kids go to bed hungry. Call me. I'm not a wealthy man. I'll share what I have. And I think if each of us start to change our thinking and start thinking like that, God will hear from heaven and forgive our sins and heal our land. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to gather, whether it be by way of internet or we gather personally, uh, Lord, I know we have to practice safe distancing. We'll continue to do that and keep each other safe so that we don't spread this virus. I pray for the health care workers that are on the front lines and pray for them, for you to protect them and to keep them strong, Lord. And I pray for our nation. Forgive us, Lord, where we have put other things ahead of you. And may we, as individuals, as your church, put you first in all things and seek your will and your wisdom. Forgive me, Lord, where I have sinned. Forgive all of us where we have sinned. Forgive our nation where we have sinned. and heal our land. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. Till we meet again, God bless.